Hello, and welcome to another episode of Jackson Talks. Everybody, with me, your host, Aaron Mashbitz, a.k.a. Jackson Stone. Thanks for being here. This is episode 104 of Jackson Talks, everybody. We're, well, I, we, everyone <laughs> is pumped to be in the 100s uh, for this podcast. You know, a couple weeks ago, about four now, since you're listening to episode 104, we dropped episode 100, which was titled JTE Forever or Jackson Talks Everybody Forever. And that's what I plan to do. I plan to do this podcast until I cannot. We drop one episode every week, every single Tuesday. Thanks for showing up. Thanks for listening, watching, subscribing, liking, sharing. I appreciate your support. This podcast is very important to me and I just uh, appreciate it. So welcome to episode 104 and let's get right into it. This episode will be about my specific experiences with psychedelics, specifically with mushrooms, more specifically with psilocybin. And so I'm gonna read you some information about it. I'm gonna tell you my experiences and that's gonna be kind of the meat and bones of this episode. And so as a disclaimer to start, I am not a medical professional. I am not a doctor. I am a person who is certified as a life coach, an optimized coach, a mindset coach, a sports performance coach. Um, I'm a mental health activist and I have certifications in that domain as well. But again, I am not a medical doctor. I am not a medical professional. I am simply stating my experiences, what I've learned, what I've realized. These are not things that you should take on lightly. You should do your own research and own investigation for yourself, your own life, and what might be best suited for you and where you're at. So this is just my experience. Maybe it'll resonate with you. Maybe it will not. Maybe this is something you don't even want to hear about or I'm interested in, but I want to share my experience for those that are interested about my experiences and my uh, times when I've done psychedelics or mushrooms or psilocybin. And so to start, I, as if you're a regular listener to this podcast, you know that I've become over the last couple of years, become deeply, deeply invested, involved in mental health. Uh, I've learned, studied, and researched as much as I possibly can, getting certifications, courses, classes, lectures, podcasts, books, on all things that I can about uh, psychology, philosophy, personal development, personal growth, um, some biology, some neuroscience, thanks to uh, the Andrew Huberman podcast, and just all areas of life and limiting beliefs and overcoming things and mental health and mental health conditions. And through all of that, through You Are Loved, through Champions Adjust, through the things and the people that I talk to, through speaking engagements, coaching, um, it kind of led me down this path of wanting to explore with psychedelics because I was seeing a lot of things about new treatments, new therapy treatments for specifically addiction, some mental health conditions, and PTSD uh, with psychedelic therapy. Usually psychedelic therapy goes hand in hand with talk therapy in a clinical controlled setting with a professional, very important there. And so I was reading a lot about it and I didn't want to uh, give my recommendation for or against unless I had tried it myself. And so a few years back, I went to Broken Bow, Oklahoma with a few friends. Um, and I set an intention for myself about four to five months ahead of that trip. I set an intention for myself as I was planning to do these psychedelics with a few good friends of mine named Kelly and Keegan. And so I spent four or five months thinking about psilocybin, psychedelics, what kind of things I wish to experience, how I wanted to view myself, what things maybe I was overlooking, 
Um, I did a lot of research about it, so I wanted to be able to properly set the intention and the mood and the people I was surrounded with correctly so I could have the best experience possible. I decided it would be best if I did it in nature, surrounded by people who weren't taking psychedelics with people who could be my trip partners. Um, and uh, I, I made sure that was an important part of the trip. I didn't want to do it on a whim. I didn't want to do it alone. I didn't want to do it without a guide, without help, without setting an intention, without doing the right research, without really figuring out what I wanted to see with it for myself. And I think that's important for anything in life that we kind of dive into. Is it best for you in your situation? And then how can you make it the best for you in your situation? How can you set the right intentions to allow it to be the most productive and positive experience possible? So I did that trip in Broken Bow, Oklahoma with uh, mushrooms or specifically with psilocybin. And it was a very, very, very positive, eye-opening experience for me. And so I'm gonna be looking at some of these articles here that we have in about uh, psychedelics and that. And so basically psychedelics alter how humans view themselves and their surroundings um, and so it, it what was for me it was I was trying to take a kind of bird's eye view of my life I think a lot of times when we are stuck in a rut or we are dealing with a bad situation or we are struggling deeply with a mental health condition we believe or our mind and our brain makes us believe and it feels very real that we are gonna feel like this forever, forever. That's why it's very important to journal out when you do feel good, bad, sad, depressed, anxious. It's good to journal out those things and put a date on it so you can know how you felt three days ago, two days ago, one week ago. So when these things happen again in your life, you can know and you can reframe those thoughts as to, I got through this before, it didn't last forever, it won't last forever. What things did I do last time? What is in my mental health toolkit that has allowed me to pull me out of this and make me move forward in the way I want to? And psychedelics allow you to alter and view yourself and your surroundings from a different view. And so it allows you to kind of step back from your consciousness and see yourself as kind of a different being. You, you, you tend to believe that you're not your thoughts um, and that the feelings you have won't last forever. It, it, uh, it's kind of a mystical experience really that's like not easily understood. Um, it's, it's really like a spiritual connection um, um, to the divine. Um, it's, an, it's, it's, uh, it's an insightful experience. It increases your awareness, your understanding of themselves. Um, but it is challenging because it heightens your physical and emotional responses and um, you feel kind of tingly a bit. You're unsure what you might be feeling, but it does allow you to connect with yourself on another plane, on a spiritual level. It's kind of seeing the divine through you um, and allowing you to take a step back from your life and see like, okay, what am I doing here? What can I do differently? Oh, this is a thought. I'm not my thoughts. They're just a part of me. Okay, these emotions are kind of unresolved. This thing is unresolved. How can I get to the root of it and resolve it and go from there? And so it allows you to kind of stay, take a step back from that, at least in my experience and, and some of these uh, peer-reviewed journals and articles and scientific research that's been done um, states that to be true as well. Um, and... and uh, and so there, there is a, there is a bit of a stigma associated um, with these types of drugs um, because of the challenging experiences, the bad trips, right? But those things can be mostly mitigated through controlled environments, setting the right intention, being around a guide, a professional, and doing it in a setting that's most conducive to have the best outcome, um, right? You have like this, this, this state of of surrender. Your ego uh, kind of dissolves. Um, you have a deeper sense of connection to the people and the broader world around you. Um, there, there's a lot of studies that bear these results. 
and I wanted to try it for myself. And I, I found it to be very, very, very um, encouraging. I felt like there was a breakthrough um, when I was in and around walking through nature. You kind of feel like everything around you is breathing, which it is. The plants, the trees, the flowers, the grass, it's all alive. They're all alive, but we tend to be moving so quick in our life that you know, we can't just stop there and see that this tree is so beautiful. It's breathing, it's breathtaking. You have these intense conversations with people and you, you find yourself deeply immersed in the present moment and I thought about the whole time during my trip was like, how do I get this present when I'm not on these types of drugs? How do I get this locked into how beautiful life is, to how everything is alive and breathing? How do I see myself? How do I dissolve my ego? How do I have this deeper sense of connection with people um, and the broader world and with nature and just with love in general? And so, um, I, f I found it to be very, very, very amazing a a breakthrough. Um, I've, I've done it. I've taken two other trips outside of the one in Broken Bow. So I've totaled th taken three mushroom trips or I've done psychedelics or psilocybin three different times. And each time has been a bit different, but the environment mostly the same outside in nature, surrounded by at least one or two people that I love the most. And that's a controlled environment, taking a safe dose, um, not doing any extra things with it, no anything else outside of that. You're just simply focused on that, and being present, being alive, feeling yourself, connecting deeply. Um, and those things were, it was really, really, really important for me to experience it. And I'm, I'm a proponent for it now. I'm a proponent for doing these types of treatments and therapies in a controlled environment with a guide, with a professional, um, on top of, right? This is not a standalone treatment. It's not a cure-all, but it's on top of doing these other things that I talk about regularly, implementing all of the things in your mental health toolkit, exercise, journaling, support groups, connection, talking to a professional, and then using these as an enhancement of those things to allow you to get uh, outside of your consciousness to see yourself as this beautiful divine being to help you with your addiction, your mental health conditions, your PTSD, whatever it may be that you're going through. And so you can go online and you can find the uh, efficacy of psychedelics from a bunch of case studies. Um, there's one that I was looking at from the National Library of Medicine. It's called psilocybin as a new approach to treat depression and anxiety in the context of life-threatening diseases. And they found out that it, was, it works if you, you can read that study on this peer-reviewed journal. Um, I, will, I will link these articles, the Forbes article that I found in the show notes if you want to see more of these studies that they list in here. Um, but, you know, the research on these psychedelic drugs is ad admittedly preliminary. Um, you know, some reports are based on small sample sizes. Um, but, you know, I do think that the results can be promising um, if we kind of continue to remove the stigma of mental health, that everyone has mental health, everyone struggles. We all think, feel, and act, and that encompasses our mental health. And we can utilize these different tools that are available to us in ways so we can become the best version of ourselves on a more consistent basis. And it potentially could be the use of these psychedelic drugs that can allow you to do that. It has to be right for you. It has to be in the right setting, a controlled environment conducive to you and best for you with someone who is a guide, a professional, a support, um, setting the right intention as you go in. There's a lot of things that have to be thought out and thoroughly planned. And you have to be very sophisticated with the way you do and go about these things. But it could potentially have large benefits for those struggling with deep, deep things. And so, um, yeah, and so there is a, um, there is such thing as or what people refer to as a bad trip. I'm, I'm kind of in the space of there's no such thing as a bad trip. Now, there, there's many contexts you can have to this. If you're, if you're doing these 
psychedelic drugs and then you take other th substances and then you drink alcohol and then you're around loud noises and outside and bar and like all of that stuff will not be conducive for the trip you want to experience if you're trying to set this intention of improving your mental state, improving your life, improving your presence, getting a deeper connection, that yes is a bad trip, but you have not done the appropriate things to set yourself up for the best trip possible. When I refer to it at being um, no such thing as a bad trip, I mean you've done all the appropriate things, you've checked off all the boxes, you've done the right things, you've done the right approach, you've taken care of yourself prior to it, you've set the right intention, you've done the things you need to do, you're with a professional, you're doing talk therapy, you're doing other mental health related activities, and you want to use this little bit of extra help, then there's no such thing as a bad trip because it might be difficult, the trip might be very difficult, it might be hard, it might be challenging, you might feel a little sick. Uh, my second trip was this way. It was very hard. It was really hard, but it was revealing to me some things that I was just ignoring in my life. Some previous emotions, some things that I was pushing down, some things that I needed to say to myself, to other people. So it was challenging. It was hard. There was a lot of emotions that, f that flood through. There was a lot of tears. There was a lot of release. And it was hard, but it wasn't bad because when I came out of it, I made those adjustments in my life to allow myself to see what I saw in that trip with the open of the consciousness, seeing the divine through me. What is that telling me? What do I need to address? What's unresolved? Where's the root of it all? And yes, even in our real life without psychedelics, those conversations are challenging and hard, but they're necessary. They're necessary to get down to the root of what's happening in your life, in your brain, in your body, in your physical body, in your mind, all of these things so we can start to unravel those things, unpack them, and open ourselves up to becoming the best version of ourselves. That's what it's about. So that's why I believe there's no such thing as a bad trip, just a hard, challenging trip. Again, if you have set the right things in order, if you've done the appropriate measures, if you've done all the things in the right way, um, in the appropriate way, in the most healthy possible way, then that's what I believe to be true. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm not a medical doc. I'm not a medical professional. And I'm not a doctor. I'm someone who's experienced these things firsthand, who's done a lot of research, studying, and talking about these things. And I want to share my experiences, what's been best for me in these situations and how it's helped me and potentially how it could help you. But like all promising breakthroughs, like all promising breakthroughs in life, it's going to take some time for these things to develop, but the impact, I think, I think the impact can be well worth the wait, and I think there's already some studies that prove that it could help you now via your addiction, your PTSD, your severe mental health conditions, or just doing it as a way to get beyond yourself, to connect deeper to love, to nature, to the divine, to all of these things that are super important in our life, to become the individual that we want, mixed in with this beautiful society with togetherness and love and becoming, you know, closing the gap between who we are now and who we could potentially be closing that gap so we can show up as the best version of ourselves on a more consistent basis. And that's really what it's all about. That's what I want to be about. Um, that's what I try to coach and teach and talk about on this podcast is wherever you're at right now, accept that. Accept all of yourself right now. The good, the bad, the amazing, the inadequacies, accept all of it and try to love all of those parts of yourself and then realize the little tiny improvements that you can make each day. Realize the little tiny improvements you can make each day and know that you're just closing the gap each day, 1%, one day at a time, one moment at a time, one moment at a time, one moment at a time, closing the gap to be able to consistently show up as the best version of yourself more often because you deserve that and I think that's possible for you. So that's what I wanted to say about that, uh, about psychedelics. Not a long episode, but I think um, a very impactful one. Again, I'll, I'll drop some of these links in the show notes for you to kind of check out these studies and these articles yourself. But I'd urge you to do your own research if this is something that you've been thinking about. If it's not something that you care about, um, thanks for staying through the episode. I appreciate it. And uh, in some final closing notes, um, 
you know, always check in with yourself continually. How do you feel? What's one thing you could do? What's a couple things that you're doing well? What's a couple things that you can improve on? And how can you improve upon those things? Being reflective about yourself and your life, checking in with yourself, checking on how you're doing, how your body feels, your brain, your mind, your connections, your relationships, all of those things deeply checking in and then supporting and connecting with others in that way as well, I think is very important. And then in some housekeeping notes, remember the the best way, the absolute best way to support this podcast is through Patreon. Patreon is the best way. We're an ad-free podcast until something comes along that could be really beneficial for this show. But I like that I can just, there's no ads, there's no sponsors. We just roll through. The information is there for you. You don't have to be stopped by any ads. And so that means that we have to support this podcast through crowdfunding, which the best way to do that is through Patreon. Just support $1 a month, $3 a month, $5 a month. If you support $5 a month, you get one exclusive premium episode of Jackson Talks. Everybody that won't be released publicly, that will be released only on Patreon, and that's only for $5 a month. But $1 is available, $3 a month is available, and higher tiers are available with more perks and things of that nature. So that's the absolute best way to support the pod. You can actually buy um, Jackson Talks Everybody podcast merch at jacksonstone.net you can buy sweet new for everybody merch at shop for everybody.com and then if you haven't listened to my other podcast it's called champions adjust you go to champsadjust.com for merch podcast and the mindset program that we have available but the best thing that you can do that's absolutely free is subscribe to the youtube channel subscribe to the newsletter at jacksonstone.net so we can stay connected and you can get these podcasts directly to your email and then give us a review and a rate us on, on Spotify and Apple and share this podcast with a friend. Post it on social. Tag me. Let me know what you think. Let's connect deeper. I love this community. Thank you so much. This is episode 104 of Jackson Talks, everybody. And I can't wait to see you, hear from you, talk to you next week. Cheers. Much love. See you then.